My name is Luke Gordon and I'm the project leader of Manta Project Fiji. I've been involved with manta conservation and research for the last five years that started in the Seychelles and now I've come across to Fiji in the last three years. Manta Project Fiji is a small research and conservation project based in the Fiji Islands where we are working to conserve manta rays and their cousins. We were first established in 2012 and we are an affiliate of the Manta Trust, a global charity that works in over 25 different countries on the conservation of mantas and their cousins. Just behind me here is a big bay called Lavola Bay. Now we're very close to the capital Suva and recently we've made a very exciting discovery here. We found the first confirmed sighting of the oceanic manta ray in Fiji. And more excitingly still, we've had multiple sightings of the species and multiple sightings of individuals over concurrent weeks, which shows that this could be an important foraging ground for the species. When we conduct surveys, we leave from where we are now in the harbour and it takes about 15 minutes to our survey site. We make sure we have some critical pieces of equipment such as drone and GPS, and then we head out to where we survey. Now at the moment we survey actually a relatively small geographical area because that's where we've seen most of our sightings of the mantas. Not to say they're not found outside these areas, but at the moment this specific area is very productive for sightings. So when we reach our survey area, we slowly cruise and systematically search for the mantas. Now the mantas here, they feed in the bay. So when they feed, they surface feed, which means their back is exposed, the black back is exposed as they're swimming on the surface, or they somersault feed close to the surface. Now when they somersault feed, this is them doing the backward rolls that you might have seen. Now when they do this close to the surface, their ventral side breaks the surface. Not only does that break the water as a visual cue to see where the manta is, but also the sun reflects off that white surface very easily, and that's also another visual cue. So we'll look for the mantas in this geographical area by sight first, and if we don't see any, then we'll put up the drone. So firstly, we try and gather what species the manta is. You can see by different markings between the two species. And we also try and gather data on the individual. So that might be the sex, but also the identification. Now, each manta ray has different ventral spots on their surface, like a fingerprint in a human being. So what we can do is we can get clear footage of the manta somersaulting, see the ventral surface, see those spots, and then we can compare those spots to our database and see if we know the individual or see if it's a new individual. So the oceanic manta ray has just been upgraded or downgraded, however you may like to think of it, to endangered on the IUCN red list. We don't have a lot of data on the population in the South Pacific. Early studies right now are showing that the whole global community of oceanic manta rays could be the same community. They could traverse huge ocean spaces. So if the mantas here are traversing large, large distances across different oceans, that this site could be very, very important for them on that journey. To build on what we've found already of the oceanic mantas here, we need to conduct more surveys in the area over a longer period of time. What we hope to achieve over the coming years is to gather enough information that we can better understand how the species uses Fiji waters and even the wider South Pacific waters. As I mentioned, we think they possibly traverse the whole South Pacific basin, which means it's not just a Fiji conservation issue, it becomes a more wider regional issue across many nations. And we're hoping that the information here, along with information found in New Caledonia and information found in New Zealand, can pave the way to real conservation measures for the species.